For today's Science Zone, I was told to wear big boots and warm clothing, because I'm expecting the ride of a lifetime. I wish I'd been told to bring a wetsuit. Right, where next? Getting warmer? No. Is that what I've got to do? I don't know. I've been told I've got to turn round. <laughs> the, uh, oh, right, and I see you are going to talk to this fella. Come with me. Hello, mate. How are you? How are you? Hello. My name's Steve. Oh, and I don't Rob. know what your name is. Rob Pope. Rob? Yeah, that's Rob. right. Now, if I look at this, it's the National Bob Sleigh Centre. That's it's... what it's all about. Now, where am I? Thorpe Park. This is basically where we do all our training in the summer for the Bob Sleigh, which we do in the winter. What, you, you actually train... I hope you don't train on the water. No, no, no. Down there, we've got the sleds on, on some runners. We're just practising the push start, basically. And so that's what you're going to be doing. That's what I've got to do. I've you got to practise the push start. Yeah. Uh, well, I feel a little overdressed in my well, boots. That's what we've got this for, yeah. <laughs> and uh, throw right. you in at the deep end. So I've got to put my trays on. Yeah. I've got to put my uh, tracksuit on. Yep. And Bob and I, we're going bob sleigh racing Most definitely. here at Thorpe Park. I'll be with you in a minute. Right. What Steve doesn't know is that in two weeks' time he's going to be bob sleighing with Rob at the Winter Olympic Games. All right, Robert. Uh, should I call you Robert or can I call you Bob? Uh, whichever you fancy. It really right. doesn't matter. All right, Bob, let's have a look at you, Bob. Now, this is a, is this called a Bob or a Bob Sleigh? Bob Sleigh, yeah. A Bob Sleigh. So where's the engine, then? There is no engine. This is completely man-powered. But we have to push it. We certainly do, yep. Now, usually, a Bob Sleigh would go on ice, yes? yes? that's right. So why are we on concrete, then? OK, well, this, like I said, it's only for training. What we do, we use this during the summer, um, we practice our push start because obviously that's vital to the speed of the state. Like you said, there's no engine. It's basically relying on being having fast athletes and good loading skills. So we're just training to push here. That's right. And push it as hard as we can. As hard and as fast as we can. And how fast are they? How fast are these usually? Well, basically, a sled on a track, you're, some tracks you're going to hit around 144, 45 kilometres an hour. Um, well, we're not going to do that today, are we? Not today, no. no. Right, this is a four man Bob. There's only two of us, so we need two more. Do you want to come in, lads? Yeah. So, we're going to have a, a little run, aren't we? Yeah. Now, are you going to show me how to do it for the first time, or should I just watch you and sort of get me, you know, it's, sit down? And it depends how confident you feel. If you want to go for it straight away... Um... All right. No, let's go for it. Let's go for it. Let's go, go for, for it. Where do you want me to be? Where do you want to be? Uh, <laughs> do I want to be at the back? All right. right. Okay. <laughs> if, if you go well, on this side... All right. Okay. If I go at the back, I'll just be running down behind you all the way. Right. Basically, we'll give you a quick briefing on what you've got to do. What we're going to do is you'll start oh, like that, both hands on the handle, OK? Both hands around here. Your back foot on the block, OK? Don't bother getting in. Just once your foot's on there, hang on for dear life till we stop at the other end. Right. OK? Brilliant. Do you reckon you can handle that? Uh, yeah. No, uh, 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 you don't say things like, push, No. then, just up. All it is, is I'll say to Matt, right. is that back, which is basically setting the back mark right. for the sled. Yeah. He'll give me, that's back. Good and up. up. And once we've set up, the sled up. comes back and then we'll hit Go. it forward. Go, right. OK? I'm with you. All right. OK. Now back! Back! Good and up! Go again. Good and up. The bobsleigh has no engine. It only moves because of forces. And you've got to understand these forces to stand any chance of winning. Take a closer look at the push start. A force to start moving. And a force to stop. A force like this push can make things speed up or slow down. Not all forces are as obvious as a push. Here, the force is gravity. Speeding up on the way down slowing down on the way up. Oh, 
Right, go on, push uh, it forward. That's it. Bend your legs in. Good position. Bye <laughs> bye. So back. So back. A strong push is vital for a good, fast start. The downhill slope means the force of gravity speeds it up even more. But there are other factors affecting its speed. Watch what happens if the bobsleigh is left to run on this flat track. It slows down and eventually stops. So there must be another force acting on it. This force is called friction. Friction is a force which acts whenever surfaces slide across each other. Here, friction acts between the runner and the track. The bobsleigh is moving again, so friction must be acting on it. Eventually, friction makes it stop. That was brilliant. I'm worn out. My legs are killing me. Good. good. Uh, it was a good day for me. What happens to you lot next? Well, basically, we're going to train a bit more, but the next stage is we go to the Winter Olympic Games. Oh, fab. And that's going to be the next time you're going to meet us, when you'll be sliding with us on the track in Norway. Are <laughs> you joking? Are you? Not at all. That's... Oh, wow. Uh, what a bit lost what to say there. Thanks very much. So we sent Steve off to the Olympic Games. Well, here I am in Norway at the site of the Winter Olympics to find out how bobsleigh performs on ice. But first, he'd better get to grips with how his car performs on ice. The bobsleigh track has been specially built for the Olympic Games. It's 1,635 metres long and has 16 curves. The drop from start to finish is 120 metres. Well, I managed to make my way to the top of the Norwegian Olympic bobsleigh run. Now, this is the start and over 1,600 metres down there is the finish. And the difference between a gold medal and no medal can be a hundredth of a second. So why is that? Well, we've got Otto Reimann, he is the uh, track manager and a bit of an expert on bobsleighs. Now, I know this is important, but what is it? This is a runner, and uh, that's most of the important things to the athletes to take care of. This is what the bobsleigh actually rides on? It rides on these uh, runners. There are four on a bob, and you can see it's very smooth. And the key thing is to minimize friction. You can see it looks like a mirror. So they must, they polish it, do they? They are polishing hours before they start. Even if something looks perfectly smooth to the naked eye, if you look at it magnified thousands of times under a microscope, the surface is actually covered in tiny bumps. The same goes for the bobsleigh steel runner. Up close, it's actually quite bumpy. And the ice is scored with fine lines and ridges. When one surface slides across another, the bumps and ridges have to slide past each other. This makes it harder to slip. It causes friction. Here we go! But sometimes friction can be quite useful. <laughs> this is very embarrassing. I can't get any grip. My feet are sliding on the ice. Oh, Otto, how do I deal with this? I think you need some assistance from these uh, special shoes. Here you can see the shoes the Bob Atlas are wearing. And What's special uh, about them? The special thing is that they are, have a lot of spikes. Here you can see about 600 spikes in each shoe. Now how do they help? That uh, helps to get maximum friction between the shoes and the ice. How do they dig into the ice? They are digging into the ice, that's the key thing. Well, a bit of luck with size 11s. I better go and put them on. Ah. Oh, excellent. 
These shoes really make a difference. I can really move it now. Yeah. So, we're going down the run. We're doing about 130 kilometers an hour. We're coming close to the end. How do I stop it? You must break. The brakes? Yes. If you try to lift the bob, you will probably see the tooths on the brake system. Right, here we go. Let's lift! Here you can see it. Ah, yes. Perfect. Right. Can we put it back down again? <laughs> it here you can see the steering devices. So by pulling in these handles, you can move the bob in the right line through the cars. Right. So, I've got the shoes, we've got the brakes, the bob, the steering. Now all I need is the crash helmet. There is a force which slows down every plane. It's all around, but the pilots can't see or hear it. It's called air resistance. Catherine Christie's job is to design planes to overcome air resistance. You can't see air resistance, but you can sometimes feel it, especially here. This is a wind tunnel where we can artificially create a very strong wind. These rotating blades can produce a very strong current of air. The air rushes around the tunnel and into the test area. This is where we test the model planes. At the moment, the air in here is very still and it's very easy for me to walk in the tunnel with the fan switched off. When planes fly through the air, the air rushes over the plane's surface too. Normally you can't see it, so the engineers have devised ways of seeing its effect. These wool tufts show how the air flows over the surface of this model plane. It's much easier for the air to flow past a smooth surface than a bumpy one. Another way of seeing the airflow is to use luminous paint. As the wind blows, the paint dries into swirling patterns. The air may be invisible, but it does have an effect. Air resistance is actually the friction between the air and the plane's surface. A shiny, smooth surface, a streamlined shape, so there's less air resistance, and the plane can fly faster and further. The crash helmet, I don't mind, but nobody mentioned this. Otter, please tell me, why do I have to look so ridiculous in a Lycra suit? The whole system has to be streamlined, and you are part of the system. So why does it have to be streamlined? Uh, you have to reduce friction between the air and the bob. Is that why it's so shiny? Yes, of course. You have to remove all dirt and uh, dust. So it's clean, it's fast. Where do I sit? You can sit in the back as a brake man. Right, so uh, let's put my helmet on. Uh, helmet on. <laughs> Here I go. Ah, uh, ready. Oh no, you must uh, put your head a bit forward to what? reduce the air resistance. Uh, so I can't even see where I'm going. Old bobsleds were much less streamlined, so they were much slower, but the crashes were still spectacular. Modern streamlined designs make the bobsleigh the fastest sport on ice. Look at the techniques used to beat air resistance in other sports. But even if air resistance doesn't stop you, something else might. Meanwhile, Steve is making a more gentle descent of the Olympic track. 
Paul Otto, we're about halfway down the track, and I seem to be doing a lot of brushing. But what is this? This is a special tool for making uh, the track smooth. So what, what does it actually do? We have to remove small bumps in, on the ice to get it uh, really fast. So it smooths it out? Yes, so the track has to be smooth and the runners has to be smooth. So if that makes the bobs a lot faster, what is the sort of time for the bob to get from the top to the bottom? It makes uh, about 52 seconds to go down the track. 52 seconds, 1,600 metres. Oh, no, I think it goes a little bit too quick. Well, we've got about halfway to go, so... Um, oh, dear, I'm doing it a lot funny. Oh, goodbye, Steve. See you in the bottom of the track. Bye-bye, mate. Bye-bye. Oh. It's the Olympic bobsleigh final. It's Steve's turn next. He's not looking a little nervous, is he? There may be trouble ahead But while there's moonlight and music and love and romance Let's face the music You'll be all right. Fantastic! I can hardly hit the push down and down. Boys, what can I say? Ah, right. Now I've got to sign up for the team, I suppose. Oh, nice. Incredible. Oh, my God. That is the best 50 seconds I've ever had.